Hello everyone, this is Arun from Swinburne University, Australia. I have recently submitted my PhD and currently a research fellow at the Digital Construction Lab here in Swinburne. And my main focus of my research uh, was on concrete 3D printing and ultra high performance concrete. Uh, Josh contacted me a couple of months back about the opportunity to present in Rylem and it's my great pleasure to be here. So let's get into it. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional owners of the land on which Swinburne campuses are located, and I pay respect to the elders past, present, and emerging. So what is concrete 3D printing? Here we completely eliminate the use of foam work and use a robot to manufacture concrete members. First, the print design is programmed to the robot printer. And then the print material, which is concrete, is pumped to the printer and then extruded via a nozzle and deposited layer by layer to build the concrete member. I can run this video so you can get a sneak peek of what we do. There are several advantages to this technique. Since we get rid of the foam work, we cut down the cost and waste. We can also print nice geometries since foam work basically limits the shape of the structure. That kind of reduces the disputes between architects and civil engineers, basically structural engineers. The use of machine also makes this form of construction faster. However, there are some limitations in the development of this technique. As we know, the area is very new, so we have only a limited amount of concrete mixtures and they generally use high binder content and less coarse aggregates. We are still processing on how to install reinforcement to these concrete members. And when we print layer by layer, an interlayer zone is formed between the layers, which is generally weaker than the rest of the concrete. So in our research, we formed a very simple research question. Can we develop a material that fits the complex nature of this technique. How can we maximize the tech advantages that 3D concrete printing has on offer? And how can we reduce the limitations in the material? How about a concrete that has good mechanical properties? So we looked at ultra high performance concrete or we can call it UHPC. This was developed in mid 1990s with a compressive strength of 150 megapascal or above and is about three to four times the normal strength of concrete. Ultra high performance concrete also has high durability and tensile toughness. Due to its high strength, we can make very thin elements with ultra high performance concrete almost to the size of steel. Turns out, that is exactly what we look for in concrete 3D printing because thin shapes can lead to complex geometries. So we get to the lab and start exploring ways to produce ultra high performance concrete. There are basically two main techniques that we need to adapt to produce ultra high performance concrete. First, we need to have a very dense particle packing, which means it's very low porosity and that means the high mechanical properties when it's hardened. In our case, we used a packing model developed by Anderson and Anderson with all dry materials and then try to achieve a high level of particle packing. We use silica fume which has particles in the range of micrometer diameters to fill the gaps between cement particles. Then we use a very low water to binder ratio in the range of 0.2 or even less than 0.2. So we have to use super plasticizers to make UHPC flowable as the water in itself is not enough for surface wetting. Thereafter, once it became a matrix, we added fibers. So basically we use micro steel fibers to increase the tensile properties of this matrix and we make it as a UHPC composite. So this ultra high performance concrete composite is what we use for normal casting. As you can see, it is self-compacting and very flowable. In order to make it printable, 
and for it to be able to hold the shape once deposited, we introduced another admixture in the form of nanoclay. Nanoclay basically provides a platform for cement and sand, pa sand particles to flocculate together so the viscosity can be increased. So now we have two admixtures, a superplasticizer which makes UHPC flowable and nanoclay which reduces the flow. So we needed to find a balance between these two mixtures, admixtures to make UHPC printable without losing its high mechanical properties. So now we have developed ultra high performance concrete. Let's dive into complex geometries. It's a simple theory slide just to look at the basics of cantilever designs. We used a simple cobelling process where the sum of local cantilevers lead to the overall cantilever. To avoid any overhanging, the cohesion of the concrete should satisfy equation 1, where rho is the density of the material, g is the gravitational acceleration, ht is the height with time which depends on the printing speed of, of, of the whole technique and alpha is the overhanging angle. The static yield stress of the material increases with time as in equation 2. So once deposited on the ground the concrete will start gaining yield stress but with overhanging at each layer the cohesion should also satisfy rho g h t tan alpha. So to avoid failure, we can summarize this as in equation 3. Also, you can see the tan 90 degrees approaches infinity. So at some overhanging, the failure is definite. So there is a physical maximum which is put by the overhanging design. And we need to find a material limitation to fit this physical maximum. So we wanted to know the static yield stress development of ultra high performance concrete with time. For that, we used a rheometer with a vein probe. We prepared the printable ultra high performance concrete, added it to the rheometer vessel, and then used pre shearing to avoid any flocculation at the beginning, and, te and then tested the yield stress with a constant shear rate up to 30 minutes. The results is given on the right hand side diagram, and we fitted it. To a straight line as proposed by Russell et al and also given in equation 2. So in simple words this is a line that shall not be passed. If the applied stress that is rho g h tan alpha goes above this line the structure will theoretically fail and if it's below we can say the structure is safe. From there we get to printing. This is the 3D printer we used. Uh, it is installed in our digital construction lab at Swinburne University with a workspace of 8.1 meter into 6.5 meter into 4.2 meter height. Uh, it has six degrees of freedom, which is three linear axis movement and three rotational axis movement. And we can attach uh, several nozzles, but for this study, we attached a nozzle of 50 millimeter to the print head. It comes with a control panel to which we can send our programs via G-code. So basically we develop our designs in Rhino Grasshopper interface, then convert them to G-codes and then use it in the machine. From here, we will look at four different designs made using ultra high performance concrete. And we will look into how we worked our designs up uh, with a static stress graph in hand. So here is our first design. The leftmost side diagram shows the output file from Rhino and the actual printing is shown in the middle diagram. This has a symmetrical shape with constant overhanging angle of 10 degrees up to a height of 400 millimeter. Each layer is 10 millimeter tall, so the total layers are 40 layers. Uh, we used a layer width of 20 millimeter where the no the nozzle diameter is 15, as I said earlier, but once the material comes out, it squashes a bit and it comes up to 20 millimeter layer width. As you can see in the right hand side, the dashed line 
which is the applied stresses on the bottom layers which we calculated based on equation one in our previous slides didn't go above the straight black line which is the static yield stress of the material this ensures the safety net of this design so we can say as long as the line doesn't pass the, the straight line we are we are we are safe then we move to our second design which is exactly the same but with a high overhanging angle which is 15 degrees as you can see the design collapsed right away within the first 10 layers we plotted the settlement at each every other layer at the end and found that the increase is larger with the height so that's an indication of irreversibility as you can see on the rightmost side diagram the blue dotted line which is the applied stress as in equation one crosses the straight line at about 12 minutes which is in the range of 12 to 14 layers so we can see the prediction is closely approximate even though it's not perfect so we can use this as a thumb rule for designs and now we move to our third design here we try to push the limits of the material so we developed a design which goes up to a maximum height which is 200 millimeter with an overhanging of 25 degrees and then return to lower overhangs the leftmost side is an output file of rhino and the middle file is the real printing outcome as you can see in the rightmost side diagram we always keep the dashed line below the straight line by adjusting the overhanging height we printed this dumbbell shape structure up to one meter height and with 400 millimeter diameter in one go similar to the last designs the layer height is 10 millimeter and this structure has 100 layers uh, stacked one on top of the other in a similar way we designed our fourth and final design with a twisted shape here we had multiple overhanging angles at different locations of the design as in the rightmost side diagram at all three locations taken for analysis the dashed lines that indicates the applied stress are always below the straight line that indicates the yield stress we printed this up to one meter as well with 10 millimeter layer height and 100 layers we also reduced the print speed at high inclinations just to ensure additional safety if you remember equation one it has a height component so if you reduce the print speed the height which is the function of time is reduced and then we can reduce the applied stresses in that way as well so where are we now we have a material that works fine and allow us to print complex shapes we are of course limited by physics of cantilever designs that's the trees in the forest that we cannot water but we also face some issues in terms of print quality which are trees in the garden that we can water so the main reason as we understand for such irregularities in print quality as you can see in the images are low mixing efficiency especially the silica fume that doesn't disperse properly in the mix and stay as flocculated junk in the final mixture and also the clogging of fibers which can lead to blockages So some PhD students from our lab are currently investigating several approaches to address these issues. One is a near nozzle mixing strategy where the mixing is super fast and happens close to the nozzle. Another study is an inline activation of the print materials where the concrete can flow easily via the pump and close to the nozzle its setting is accelerated. However, these techniques are not specifically developed for UHPC ultra high performance concrete in itself already has two admixtures as we discussed earlier and we need to study whether we can add more admixtures to it without compensating their superior mechanical properties uh, these are the questions for the future and i will leave you with this thank you for listening and i am happy to take any questions and thanks again to rylem for this incredible opportunity to present our works and thanks josh for the invitation have a good day, y'all, and over to you, Josh.